as expected, this part two of the acute sharpening system, parallelogram, all the video clips are way too long. Uh, it's hard to thin it down because there are so many odd bits and pieces and stages. So I've elected to uh, cut off the uh, initial stage, including up to the end of lathe work. That's uh, part 2A. This is part 2B. Probably longer than the part A. <laughs> Stay with me and uh, we'll try and get through this and at the end of it hopefully show you what we've achieved. Which at the end doesn't seem a lot really, considering all the time involved. Alright, let's crack on. Right, well I'm concentrating on the parallelogram and I've got some milling to do. This uh, this piece here, we've done the register on it and we've got to mill the back side for this piece and that is referred to as the fence. That's all part of the part of the setup for a tool sharpening cutting tool sharpening, not uh, cut milling cutters, but uh, the piece itself, like all these, uh, they're laser cut and the edges are pretty darn good, which is why I may have mentioned before, I may not bother to turn that down. It's made oversized, but I don't know whether I should bother to turn it down, it's probably cosmetic on that. However, for this fence, which has got to be a sliding fit in the uh, slot we're going to mill in here, uh, instead of having the laser cut finish, I'm just going to skim off about 5 thou just to get a smooth edge so it'll run better in the uh, slot when we mill it. This is 21 mil. The drawing says 20. Well, I'm not going to take half a mil off each side. There's no point. I'm purely cleaning it up. the cut was very light all the way. Uh, I got this dialed in to within about a thou uh, so we've now got a nice smooth edge. I'm using a 7 16th carbide 5 flute which I happen to have. I had some smaller carbides but they're 2 flute and I thought a multi flute was going to be better on here because it's such gnarly stuff. So uh, I'm going to flip this over, probably use some more parallels to get packing so I can, uh, now that surface is good, to flip it over and probably not have to indicate. Right, a little bit of explanation here. Bear with me, I'll just try and explain one or two things. So we got this uh, milled either side. As I said to you, it was laser cut, and I discovered after the first cut that uh, once the, the remaining side uh, disagreed by about nine thou. So I had to set that up, especially to get uh, parallel. We're now good, I would say, to half a thou. Now we've got that done, we've got to mill the slot to receive it. Now there's a problem with that, uh, in as much as if you remember uh, when we machined this piece, which is the one with the uh, deeper register on it, it wasn't running quite right or true. This is laser cut too. Um, but I, I virtually had to go by my center hole, which is threaded. Um, 
check my notes. So what we've done here is because this is not totally symmetrical from center, I've taken a whole bunch of measurements and deduced that here to center and there to center is about the equal dimension. All right, because across the other directions there's a discrepancy. So these lines, which you probably you might see them, I can't tell from here. I've got two rough lines, they're not really guidelines, they're just giving me some idea of where I should be milling. Now for convenience I put in a gauge pin and the gauge pin is 0.195 I found centre by using my ball race which I rather like and uh, the ball race is at 7 eighths um, yeah 0.875 so half of that 437 half of the pin 098 so 535 five, I've already zeroed the Y and if I get back to my zero try and find it right now you won't you won't see much from there because the uh, bearing is probably hiding it anyway that's my theoretical center now we've just got to do a bit of math and uh, sort out the coordinates for the milling cutter which is uh, it's a three flute, three flute half inch carbide. So we've got to get that set up. Just to add before I start, because um, I forgot to actually finish saying it. Sorry, there's a fan running at the moment. Um, the reason for having those, setting it for those equal measurements, is probably pretty obvious that I'm working to the centre of the uh, screw hole. And the other thing you might notice. I have two pieces of scrap aluminum here and seeing as the vise is bearing on uh, both sides of a circle I've got the aluminum to give better bite rather than leather so the, the vise is done up pretty good and uh, we're pretty firm there so I think what we're going to do others may think different but I think what I'm going to do is to take my center cut and go down to depth get that finished and with the half inch cutter that will leave me 286 divided by 2 that's 143 left and 143 right and that should get us to what we want which is uh, 876 no sorry 786 we'll see how we go um, I'll just show you one other thing, just for those who may not have seen it. That's uh, my backup for the Z. The digital readout's pretty darn good, but uh, I don't know. Sometimes something analog seems to be more meaningful, and we've got to go down 118, probably be 120 actually to give me a couple of thou. Um, this bar, this bar, that's uh, three mil. So we'll go down to the three mil and a thou or two extra, and that's the plan anyway. Well, we've got a reasonable start. I did try a couple of 20 thou cuts, but with this gnarly stuff, it really is not very nice. I'm reducing that to 15. And uh, just make progress. We're down to coming down. This will be a 90th hour depth huh? once we get through. Well, that 
was only a 15th hour cut, but my gosh, you can probably see there's some smoke there. Don't suppose I'll ever find out what this material is, but <laughs> anyway, I'm going to finish that off and then we'll do us a side cut. I'll come back um, when we get a bit further. I started a side cut and I'm still going at 15 thou. I could probably go 20 now, I'm out of the middle, but um, slow and steady. Uh, I won't video this section because um, otherwise I'd be climb milling, which I don't want to do. So when I get this side done, I'll uh, get a bit of footage on the second side, probably. Okay, we're on to side two. Steady cuts, bit of oil. I'm actually, uh, I've left myself on the DRO about a thou short this way so I can take a final tidy up cut for the final fit. That's the plan. <laughs> Actually, slightly, slightly heavier cut, but uh, still keeping it reasonable. Finish this off. There's no need to bore you with the whole darn thing. I thought I'd fly in my arm, it's the chips. <laughs> I'll be back in a bit. Alright, we're down to depth on that. And this is very, very near. Like I said to you, I stayed a thou, a thou off what we needed, and that's just, I think, that tiny little bit. So I'm going to take a half thou, just see if that'll help. See if the uh, that's basically only just kissing it. I know where that'll should be getting pretty close. There we are. There we are. It looks as though I could have gone just a smidgen deeper, actually. I went to three mil. I'm not sure whether this stuff was exactly three. I'll have to check that. That feels... Uh, that feels nice. I could go another half foul, but... I'm going to keep it at that. All right, so that's that piece. Not sure I'll get much more done today. We've got another hot day tomorrow. It depends on whether I can get out in the morning. Oh, you can't even. <laughs> I just realized 
I just realised let's uh, crank this up. Sorry about that. I've taken the workpiece out of frame. So anyway, just to uh, I've got any bits. Still got some uh, little bits here and there. Now that end, actually, I, I said to you earlier, I think this is half a, about a half thou out. Might just have to use some 600 grit down there. Yeah, that's pretty good. Very little, uh, very little slop. Just a little bit of stoning down this end, rather than make this bigger. That's it for this section here. So we're going to deburr that, and then we've got to take a side cut on another piece, which uh, that probably will be next, I think. Now I've got some cleaning up to do. Um, just relieved this. I think it was probably about three or four tenths plus this end, this last two inches. So I've just dressed that 600 grit and uh, now we can go through. It's a job to get it started. There we go. There you are, that feels good. And then this way round. That feels good. All right. Okay. Back soon, ish. <laughs> oh, I'm playing with another weird camera angle. Not sure how well it'll work. It's a bit of a bird's eye view here. I guess we can. I don't know whether I may zoom in a bit. Anyway, here's where we're at. The next piece is the uh, it's the top clamp, and that's going to be clamped onto the side of the table. We're already drilled and tapped. Now that uh, now that here it means. Going into, we probably won't see the line, I don't think. I've got a slight line on here, which is a, an approximation. Uh, it's not overly critical. There's the, just about see the 6mm threaded hole there. So we're going to finish short of that by uh, a couple of mil. But the depth wants to be the thickness of the table minus well it's listed as minus 0.1 I've just remembered the uh, 0.1 of course is 0.1 mil so that's uh, 0.39 0.39 uh, four is it anyway so we'll go to four thou short of the four mil depth so we're going to 1.154 and I, I'd quite like to have this on its side and uh, mill that way but it's not a safe way to hold this piece even if I've got aluminum softings and the vice done up I don't think it's going to work. I could prop it up on parallels but again I think in this case we're going to have to mill down to our line, go down in stages and rely on quite a bit of side milling. Um, so I'll probably finish up short by, well we'll go to whatever I said, we'll go to 154 minus and then check the depth. Of course this is not super critical in some ways because it's quite feasible to consider could even consider having a lining on here you could even go deeper and put a uh, a thin leather liner on there better grip maybe 
so not overly critical and uh, we'll have to come across here so we're conventional milling. I've left the half inch carbide cutter in here and uh, we're going to try that. I'll take a few cuts see how we get on. Well working our way down I'm not sure whether you can see an awful lot from that angle actually. It might be a bit too high up. Um, I'm actually going in uh, 153 at the moment which is about a thou short and we'll see how that works out and I'm only taking 15 thou cuts even with this cutter this uh, this is not nice stuff to work with I'll bring you back when we get uh, down towards the end of this one. Well, I zoomed in a little bit. Um, I'd love to have taken bigger cuts, but to be honest, as I said, I don't think it would. Wouldn't like it. So one more pass, maybe a finishing pass, just a light cut. So it's not super critical on the depth there, and I've just checked the. Uh, well, the height. I've just checked the depth on here and it's uh, spot on 153 and that gives me pretty much the minus 0.1 mil tolerance. Five thousand finishing cut, and I think I'm, I think I'm as far down as I need. I'm fairly close to the uh, centre hole. Actually, I might take one more. Anyway, we'll take that out in a minute and deburr it. I did take another uh, <coughs> two or three passes to get down to. Uh, that's uh, on the drawing. It's one mil. There's no reason not to take it pretty tight <coughs> tight to that hole. So it's uh, not worked out too bad, it's just very tedious. And uh, this, this depth, this way, I could have gone a little bit further on that, but I wanted to give a good lock up. So as I said earlier, I've always got the option to put a, a thin liner on there, which could even be a paper liner if I need to get better grip. So it's going to see, see how it works out. Another little uh, mini mill. That's the uh, tool holding area. Um, movable jaw. And we've got to take that, uh, that little groove, which is not over critical actually. So we're going, I've already touched off, so we're coming this way by 2 mil, 78 thou nominal, and depth will be 1 mil, 39 thou. 
I don't suppose you'll see a whole lot from there. And it's going to take a five thou. See how it looks. I'll take another 10. Right, I'll finish getting that down to depth and then I will take a skim cut on here because uh, when the movable jaw is in place it's not quite allowing the 25mm tool holding block to go in. So we'll take probably take 5 thou off that and I expect I'll take 5 thou off the uh, similar shape piece, the fixed uh, jaw or fixed way. Just a relief skin on the top here. All right, that should do there. The uh, drawing does call. For a chamfer, 45 degree chamfer, it's a bit of a technicality really. Uh, this area here calls for a 45 degree chamfer. I mean, the, re the only reason for that groove uh, basically is uh, somewhere for the crud to go when you put the tool block in. And a little chamfer on, on here will do by hand. Register there is nominally two by one. The chamfer called for on this surface, I've just added a small amount by hand. I don't think it was really terribly important. So we're done with that piece for now. And then the next challenge is going to be to extend this wretched countersink. This was the direction I had to go with the hole to get the darn thing centered. So I think what I'll do is put this in a three jaw chuck on the mill table, um, lock it down and take a countersink against, against that face. It might be clear or clear as mud, but <laughs> I've got to extend that so that the uh, bolt will go into the uh, eased part of the hole. Just a damn nuisance really. Ah uh, well, this annoying, very very annoying uh, problem here. This is the top piece of the locking block. Uh, if you remember, you probably do, if you followed this, that uh, that <coughs> hole never came out dead centre and in order to turn the register underneath that register the hole had to be enlarged to get centred. Um, so I've had to try and extend the countersink slightly bit ugly actually but, but as you can see what I've done is I put a three jaw on here without taking off my milling vise which I don't want to disturb having got it set up 
So I just clamped this on and then I've used a multi flute and brought it down very carefully, advanced on the X and uh, took it out to try it and in the end let me put this in this still annoys the hell out of me actually this uh, bolt's got to be shortened eventually but this really ticks me off because I don't like having to fake things up as I call it. It's still far from ideal in my mind. You see it's pretty freaking ugly. <laughs> and the bolt is well underneath now which of course is necessary because we've got the uh, parallelogram bars coming off here. So the thing is, if that, if that's just loosened a smidge, we can still, we can still rotate that underneath for that other piece we dealt with. All right. So now I've got a few tidying up bits to do. Then we'll try and get it together, unless I've forgotten something else, <laughs> which is quite possible. Okay guys, we're going to try and make it a wrap here. I've no idea how long this uh, part two is going to be. It seems to have taken forever getting all these parts done and, uh, I don't know, small bits. Pain in the butt, really, some of them. Anyway, uh, there's the parallelogram. All right. I'm probably going to change it over this side so it'll go the other side of the table but this will this this will give you some idea of what it's about there's the uh, that's got to be shortened that little bit of bolt protruding that slot is for the uh, fence which you saw me doing that milling for that one that's got to be dealt with soon um, so that that'll rotate because this this bolt eventually will be uh, loctited just to firm it up. But <laughs> there's my ugly countersink. That really gets gets my uh, chaps my whatnot. <laughs> um, great pity that had to mess around with that countersink. Anyway, there we are with that thus far. I have incidentally, you may may not be able to see it here on the, uh, you might see that has got a piece of thin cardboard on it because it gives a better grip on the table. Right, there we go. I will change this over to this side probably, but more or less same difference really. Uh, so once you're fixed to a position on here, this, uh, let me just tilt that a bit more, there you are. So that will go over the whole area, let me just zoom in a bit. There you are, I can see a little bit more probably. But that's the principle there. And if I, I won't keep showing you this plan book, but just the reminder here of the picture of the whole thing. All right. You can st um, pause that one if you wanted to study it a bit more, but um, the tool block, I don't know which step I'm going to do next. Uh, we've got the fence this bit which has got to go on or be made available shall we say and that will be in use for sharpening tooling 
and then here is where the let's know whether I've adjusted this yet properly. Hang on. This is all a bit awkward trying to fake it up. Sorry about that. I was trying to get this uh, lever readjusted here. Yeah, so there we got that that option underneath there. And the tool block. I haven't readjusted this. Uh, anyway, I'm going to call that a wrap for now. As I say, I don't know how long it's going to be as a video, but if you stayed with me, um, thank you for watching. <laughs> There's a lot more to come, and I don't know how I'm going to find time. Uh, I've got a few other things I need to get done as well. But anyway, over time, uh, we'll hopefully get it sorted. So, I'll see you soon, guys. Thanks for watching.